Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, it's Chris Nichols here. In one of our other videos, we committed heinous atrocities to lenses to see just how much punishment they could take before they would actually get damaged. You should watch it, it's a good watch. But it got us curious to think, well, what about just common occurrences and situations or minor damage to the front of your lens? What could that actually do to your images, if anything at all? So we thought we would test that out. We've got four criteria. So before we get started with all of these tests, we wanted to shoot things wide open and then stop down. And of course we have a control which is clean. All right, so the first test, fingerprints, because they happen very easily for various reasons. And you can see here with my adorable daughter, nice and contrasty, very sharp. So when we get fingerprints, whether it's at F4 or at F8, it really does affect the image quality. We also put fingerprints on the back element, because honestly that happens more than you might think, just reaching in to grab a lens with no back cap on it, for example, it happens. And again, in this particular situation, we do still see some loss of contrast. It will really depend how it affects your lens based on that lens's formula. Regardless, fingerprints actually cause some serious image quality degradation, and yet they're one of the easiest things to clean off your lens. So you always wanna be careful and look out for them. So the second thing we did is a light misting of water on the front of the lens. Of course, this happens a lot though, if you accidentally spit on your lens when you're blowing on it or you get rain on it. And uh, again, in the shots where we have softer light, whether we stop down or shoot wide open, you do notice definitely a loss of contrast, maybe a little bit of sharpness too, but it's not too bad. Now. We also decided, well, why don't we shoot it into the light for maybe a landscape shot or something, stop down to F16. And here you can see very clearly that every single water drop, it creates a very distinct round shadow. Now you might be able to use this in a creative situation, but for the most part, you definitely wanna keep water droplets off your lens. That's why hoods are so useful. Now our dust test was interesting because this is one of the things that people get really anal about and stress out over and try to get off their lens. And if you watch our other video, we actually found dust to be one of the most abrasive substances. You wanna be quite careful with it when you're cleaning your lenses. Now in our tests here, compared to the control, you're hard pressed to really notice much degradation. And we really covered the lens in a lot of dust as you can see. So, uh, you know, even stop down, if there is a loss of contrast, it's very hard to see. Now we did also put dust on the rear element just to see what that did. And again, even if we point these things at bright light sources or shooting Jordan's portraits, you really didn't see much degradation. And of course, this will go for any dust that also gets inside your inner elements. So overall, unless you're stopping the lens down in a serious way, I really Really don't think dust is something that you should stress out about. Now, one thing I will say, if you've got dust on the rear element of your lens and you put it on your sensor, as you can see here, brutal amount of dust will migrate to your sensor and then that will absolutely cause problems in your photo. Now last, ooh, scratches to the front of the lens. Of course, it's gonna destroy your resale value, but does it destroy your images? Well, first we did some light scratches with sandpaper, although way more than you would typically see on a lens that you're still gonna shoot. And in soft light, you're again, not really gonna see much degradation at all. In fact, the real degradation we saw is by using an old Canon EF 35 to 105. That's what really hurt our image quality. But as far as the scratches go, really didn't see much damage. Now, if you do shoot stop down, especially in to bright sunlight, now you are gonna see some of that light scatter and catch the scratches. And in those situations, yes, it might be detrimental. But remember, we did a lot more damage to this lens than you would typically see. But why stop there? Let's go even further. Heavy scratches with a Dremel tool, deep gouges. Now, Again, wide open, surprisingly, you do see a loss of contrast on the portraits of Jordan when we're shooting softer light at a telephoto range. When we do go to the wide angle though, yes, absolutely, you are gonna see some serious damage and those gouges become dark black shadows. So clearly, scratches on the front of your lens are not great for image quality. In fact, none of the things that we did to the front of the lenses here are very good for image quality. But what we are seeing is an absolute relationship compared to how bad these obstructions are gonna show up and how much depth of field you have. When we look at our shots where we're using telephoto lenses or we look at the shots where we're shooting wide open, a lot of these problems are minimized or disappear almost entirely. It's when we increase the depth of field by doing things like going a wide angle or stopping the aperture down tighter that these obstructions start to show up as shadows and damage that we can actually easily see in our photographs. So, you know, that does mean that in certain situations, if you do have damage to your lenses, you might be able to get away with it in certain situations, shallow depth of field with longer telephoto lenses. 
I should also point out that today we're shooting on a Canon EOS R, which is a full frame sensor. And the larger the sensor, the shallower the equivalent depth of field. So F16 on the Canon would give me roughly the same depth of field as say F8 on a micro four thirds sensor. So depending on what sensor size you're using, just keep that in mind as well. Uh, you know, it's funny when we used to work at the camera store, John and I would always get customers who would return a brand new lens saying, oh, there's a little piece of dust right inside one of my elements. I know nobody wants to see that, but the large result is it'll have zero effect on your image quality. Check out Lens Rentals, uh, a blog article where they actually found a fly in their lens just to really illustrate that point to an extreme degree. Anyways, I hope you guys found this useful. Please leave your comments below. Check out Instagram and Twitter. Go to deepyearview.com for all sorts of great articles. We'll see you shortly.